Today I'm answering your questions about New York, from rising crime to why I still live here, the best places to eat, tourism, and more. Let's go. We'll start with a question I got multiple times. A lot of negative info about NYC lately. Crime, cost of living. Why have you decided to continue to live in NYC? Why are you still living in NYC? There's a lot of crime, homelessness, sanitation issues, high cost of living. That's a very fair question, and you might say it's because I make videos about New York for a living, but I can easily commute in from the surrounding region a few times a week if I wanted to. First, a little background on myself. I grew up in the suburbs in northern New Jersey, about 20 minutes away from the George Washington Bridge. I know exactly what that life is like. I do not miss relying on a car to do everything, going to CVS twice a day to purchase simple things. The walkability and proximity to everything I really need is probably the top reason I'm here. Of course, I love the culture, the food, the diversity. I'm really a big fan of my current neighborhood in Brooklyn as we have a toddler and there's so many activities for him a short walk away. I wanna go through some of these points though, one by one. We'll begin with crime and we're gonna to get to this a little bit more later on as well. Now, I am not trying to downplay the city's issues with crime in the last couple of years because yes, yeah, statistically, crime is up in New York City. And there's a lot that New York needs to do better about it. That is for certain. But there's become a very popular narrative in the media lately showing the downfall of New York. And it's getting a little bit out of control. Honestly, it's good business. Clicks make money, headlines make money. And there's many people out there who relish nothing more than seeing a big city like New York having troubles. And I'm gonna illustrate another example of how media narratives tend to work. Let's look at Boeing. I feel like every time I go on my computer, there's a new article about how some Boeing plane over the Pacific had severe turbulence. And maybe a few months ago, that wouldn't have even been news. But because Boeing is a hot button word, it's everywhere. New York City and crime is exactly the same way right now. Literally, there are faceless YouTube channels now popping up, spewing negative news about New York City from creators who don't even live here, making thousands of dollars a month. That is how crazy it's getting, and that's why negative news is so prevalent. I think there are some nuggets of truth in those videos, but a lot of it is just blown out of proportion to get attention from a lot of people who I think are never planning on visiting New York anyway. So it's creating this echo chamber that New York is basically a post-apocalyptic hellhole. I think we all need to take a more balanced approach about where we get our information from, where we get our news from, and come visit yourself. Make your own judgments as well. This is just one person's opinion. Is crime an issue in New York? Sure, it's an issue. Is it as bad as they portray it? Definitely not. And as far as cost of living is concerned, that actually would push me out of New York faster than the current crime situation would because it's ridiculously expensive to live here. I've been very fortunate that my landlord has not raised our rent more than once in the last three years, but you know, trying to buy an apartment or a townhouse in many neighborhoods of New York City, it's, it's downright impossible for most people. What are some things no one tells you about living in New York? Uh, we'll start with how many languages you hear walking around on a daily basis, how much smaller the apartments, the supermarkets, the restaurants, the stores, the hotel rooms, everything is a lot smaller in New York. Businesses change extremely quickly, probably more quickly than you're used to back home. You know, I'll go on vacation for a week or two, come back, something will always be closed. Businesses come and go very quickly in New York because leases are so expensive. New York accent is dying out. That is a sad fact. You won't hear it as much as you think unless it's from somebody who really grew up here. There are so many transplants in the city right now that I don't know what the New York accent's gonna sound like in 50 to 100 years. Things tourists walk by the locals are aware of. I am 100% going to say delis and bodegas for this one. Most tourists I'm thinking who don't venture in assume they're just a corner store selling random items like band-aids or batteries, but no, you can find some of the best sandwiches and breakfasts in there for an affordable price. And we've dedicated quite a few videos to showcasing this. So the next time you walk by one, find the deli counter in the back, you will not regret it. And that was definitely one of the biggest discoveries I made when I moved to New York, is how special and important that local bodega or deli is 
to your daily life. Rebecca asks, what neighborhoods do you feel really feel like a neighborhood, feels like a community? Examples, Upper West Side, Inwood, Cobble Hill, Forest Hills, okay. I mean, you can get neighborhood vibes in just about any of those spots that you mentioned. Uh, for me, really walking around Forest Hills, Queens was like a throwback to living in the suburbs if my suburbs were you know, somewhere in the United Kingdom maybe. But a, a lot of those areas have community feels. A lot of people grow up there, stay there. I think spots where you're gonna feel less of a neighborhood vibe, maybe gonna be like Times Square, uh, East Village, more transient spots, more touristy areas. But I may surprise you with my answer for the neighborhood I really think felt like the most old school neighborhood. It would be Burl Park, Brooklyn. The Hasidic community there, they've got their own police force, they've got their own ambulance corps, they stick together. That is the most tight-knit community I have ever seen in New York. If you had five hours to eat anything you wanted at NYC, what would it be? Time for transportation is a factor. This is meant to be a difficult question, but maybe it isn't. All right, I'm gonna cheat on this a little bit. I'm gonna assume that we're going on an empty stomach. Here's what I would do. I would meet up with my friends, Ben and Ming, and we would start in Chinatown. We'd hop around to a few dumpling spots, noodles, whatever we can feast on. Then I'd take the seven train to Jackson Heights, Queens, join my friend and frequent co-host Greg, and we'd go on a street food crawl, some of my all-time favorites like Birialandia, Fushka, whatever we could dig up. We'd eat around the world. It would be cheap, it would be great. Yeah, there's no pizza or bagels on this tour, but I tend to eat enough of that as is. If it's a first time tourist, I think you probably want to do more of the classics. But if you're tired of that, Chinatown and then Jackson Heights probably would be my one, two for a fun afternoon. An updated crime video, please. I've been seeing about the recent attacks on women by men in Lower Manhattan, and it's super concerning. Uh, thank you for the question. I did see a couple of TikToks about some women who got randomly assaulted on the street, and I can't imagine uh, how difficult that was for them. Uh, any man that's assaulting a woman randomly like that has no place in a civilized society. Throw them in jail, get rid of the key. That being said, two arrests were recently made on suspects about this crime. I don't know if they're related or not. What I do know is that because this went on TikTok, it went extremely viral by a couple of different creators. And I think it created a perception that this sort of behavior is going on all the time, day and night in New York. When I do think that these incidents happened together in a short period of time, creating a little bit of hysteria behind it, I am encouraging all women watching, and anyone for that matter, to always pay attention to your surroundings in New York. I know that in some of these assaults, the woman was looking down at her phone and didn't see the guy coming. It's a good reminder, look, I zone out in public as well, and I'm hoping that those two arrests are gonna put a stop to whatever that was. Where can we find the best bagel in Manhattan itself? Current recommendations only, please. All right, the absolute best bagel I've ever had in Manhattan. Absolute bagels in Morningside Heights. I have visited many Manhattan bagel spots. They impressed me by far the most, although it could be a little bit of a hike for some of my tourists who wanna keep things central and midtown. In that case, I would say best bagel and coffee is a very good choice if you are in the Times Square area. Choose one and why, Central Park or Prospect Park? Even though I personally spend way more time in Prospect Park in Brooklyn, I know it's the locals pick, I'm going with Central Park here. I think there's a reason that they get all the tourism and it's because it's so beautiful. You have the Manhattan skyline behind it. It's just tough to top for all of the nature that it has. It is more crowded, but I think if you know where to look, you can find a lot of areas of Central Park that aren't overcrowded with tourists. So I'm, I'm picking Central Park, especially for my visitors watching who want something really spectacular for photos. What is the best place to eat in Chinatown, particularly hand-pulled noodles? There's a great spot on Doyer Street aptly named Tasty Hand-Pulled Noodles, which would be my pick. I will be visiting NYC for the first time in June. I was wondering if taking the free Staten Island Ferry is good enough to see the Statue of Liberty, or should I take a tour boat? All right, if you just want to see the Statue of Liberty from the water, I think the Staten Island Ferry perfectly fine. Make sure to board and sit on the right versus just taking a tour boat. But if you actually want to get up close and personal with the Statue of Liberty, I always recommend going through Statue Cruises, booking their official boat to get to Liberty Island, and actually booking months in advance, trying to get tickets 
to get inside the crown because that is one of the coolest things I've ever done in New York that tourists would really love to get those photos. So if you can get crown access, I recommend it. But remember, you're gonna be spending about half of your day at the Statue of Liberty. So if you don't have the time, just take the Staten Island Ferry. That'll work too. Is the Tribeca area worth a visit? Uh, I wouldn't call Tribeca a tourist hub by any means. It's probably a neighborhood that you're gonna walk by and maybe not even realize you're there. The Ghostbusters Firehouse is there. It's probably the most popular tourist thing in Tribeca. Also, the cobblestone streets are very popular with photo shoots for people. So yeah, you can definitely admire Tribeca. Is it a must visit? Probably not. Is working on YouTube your full-time job? If not, what else do you do? Yeah, YouTube's been a full-time job for probably the last five years, but the first three years, I basically worked for free. So if you don't have the patience to grind it out, it is not the career for you. But if you have a lot of patience and a lot of passion for it, it can be one of the best jobs ever. How is a little Manila area in recent years? We haven't been since, wow, 2019, and we miss it even if it's only a few blocks. All right, so the little Manila he's referring to here is a small neighborhood within Woodside, Queens, and we just just filmed our first video there in four years. I've got to tell you, Little Manila is as good as ever. There's more Filipino businesses there than I can remember. I love supporting that community. The small business owners work so hard. They get so many people from the Filipino community and beyond to come out and eat some of their fantastic food. So check out that video and definitely go visit when you have a chance. One of the most underrated neighborhoods in all New York. Now that we answered a lot of your questions, there's still so many assumptions about New York that people get wrong. And in this video, we expose the biggest lies about New York City that people keep on believing. Watch this video next.